Hey guys, what's going on? It's Kodiak here, back for another video. Today, we are doing the full 7.1.5 Beast Mastery Hunter Guide. I know it's been a little bit of time. I wanted to get really comfortable with the Beast Mastery Hunter before I brought you guys a guide. A lot of stuff has changed since the last patch, and that's really where we need to start this conversation. During the transition into 7.1.5, a lot of hunters were concerned. Will MM still be the master spec, or should we switch to BM? Now, I made the conscious decision to switch over to Beast Mastery even though it was a serious grind in terms of AP and um, trinkets and all of that, that, the stuff that goes into switching a specialization. Now, there are some serious benefits to Beast Mastery Hunter. It's got great mobility. That's still the selling point of Beast Mastery Hunter. It's got incredible single target burst, but it is relatively legendary dependent. And as somebody that had some decent MM legendaries, switching over to BM where I didn't have any legendaries was definitely a challenge and is still a challenge to me today. I've had some terrible luck on my Hunter, but I, we'll get into that in a little bit. The BM Hunter is a great tool if you're a raid leader, if you're somebody that wants a class that's or a spec that's easier to play and easy to master. I'm gonna walk you guys through pretty much everything you need to know about the Beast Mastery Hunter from your rotation to talent choices to gems, enchants, all that good stuff and give you some quick tips uh, on how to handle some of the Nighthold bosses. Now, as I mentioned, the drawbacks to the Beast Mastery Hunter um, is the legendary dependency. Now, that's not the only drawback to the Beast Mastery Hunter. One of the big challenges that we face is pet pathing. Now, pets really haven't gotten that much smarter since Vanilla. Uh, I was just doing a Krosis fight, and if the bridge breaks while your pet's under it, your pet kind of gets sucked under the bridge for three or four seconds. And those things, including um, pathing to a boss that's further away or an ad that's further away, I mean, those things get really frustrating really quick and it ends up being a DPS loss, right? So on fights where ads are kind of all spread over the place, you will get a little bit frustrated with the Beast Mastery Hunter. Now, Blink Strikes, which is a talent choice we're going to talk about, has changed that quite a bit, but it still remains a problem that pet pathing is not that great. Um, they've, they've done some things to make it faster. The engagement time between your pet and an ad or a boss is a little bit more, uh, it is accelerated, it's a little quicker, but it's still not perfect. And as I mentioned before, guys, it is a super reliant spec on legendaries and particularly set bonuses. Now, you can look at all of the top BM hunters on Warcraft logs, and they do just fine stacked against MM hunters. Now, MM hunters took some time to get figured out, but they're doing really great right now. But BM hunters with the right legendaries and the set bonuses do a fantastic job, particularly when some of the bosses towards the later end of the Nighthold, specifically on Mythic, are really challenging, require some serious defense. PS. But let's start with the changes in 7.1.5. We're going to blaze through these since 7.1.5 has been out for a while, but I wanted to cover them for completeness of the guide. Now, the first thing is that Tar Trap and Freezing Trap are back in the game. These are great utilities for hunters. You should be using these on most encounters with ads that can be affected by these two traps. For Beast Mastery Hunter, Multishot got a nice buff. It's a 51.5% damage increase, which works really, really well in AoE cleave situations. We're going to talk about that in a little bit with Beast Cleave. Now, in terms of talent changes, we got a boost at the level 15 talent with Way of the Cobra, which makes it a strong single target choice. At the level 30 tier, we got a boost to Chimera Shot, and we also got a CD reduction on Dire Frenzy. At the 45 talent tier, Far Strider now gives active ability crits a 15% chance to reset the cooldowns of Disengage. This is up from 10%. At the 60 talent tier, one with the pack now has a 30% chance to proc. And Blink Strike now increases your pet's basic attack damage by 100% instead of 50%. At the 90, uh, 90 level tier, we have a change to Barrage, and this is actually a quite a big change. Barrage no longer deals double damage to current targets. It deals equal damage to all targets. Um, this was a big change. Barrage was kind of our bread and butter as MM Hunters and BM Hunters before 7.1.5. That is no longer the case, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. And finally, at the uh, 90 tier here, we also have Volley getting a nice 50% increased damage for BM only. At the last tier, 100, Aspect of the Beast's Ferocity-specific dots get a damage increase by 100%, and the Tenacity-specific effect now reduces the pet damage taken by 30% for 6 seconds. This is up from 15%. And we get a nice little buff to Stampede, increasing its damage by 15 Moving right along to the stat priority of the Beast Mastery Hunter. Now, the, the rundown is very simple. Mastery, haste, crit, 
verse. But let's talk about why you need each of those things. For the mastery, it's mastery of beasts. Increases your damage done by pets, dire beasts, stampede, and a murder of crows. Now, for any of you guys who have never really dived deep into the beast mastery hunter, all the damage comes from the pet. You do get some decent damage from Cobra Shot, but most of the damage from the beast mastery hunter comes from your pet. So this is a huge stat for us. You want to stack mastery as often as possible. Moving right along to haste. Haste increases our attack speed, focus regen, it reduces our GCDs from 1.5 seconds to a minimum of 0.75 seconds, and it reduces the CD of Kill Command, Dire Beast, Dire Frenzy, and Chimera Shot. So the more haste you stack, the faster you attack, the more uh, abilities you get to cast, it, it really is the secondary that you need to be stacking, as well as mastery obviously. Crit increases your critical hit chance with all abilities, which result in double damage. Uh, the more crit you have, the more wild call procs you get. Wild call resets the CD of Dire Beasts or Dire Frenzy, so this is a great one to have as well. And versatility increases all your damage and healing done and decreases all damage taken. Now, as usual, guys, if you don't know how to use SimCraft, it's the tool we all use here in the Mythic community. That's how we sim our characters. You can also use something like AMR if you're into that. You do want to sim your characters for the best results. SimCraft does have an option to export out a string, which will tell you all of your secondaries that you can import right into the game. It will show you which pieces of gear are upgrades. I highly recommend, and I will recommend multiple times throughout this video, to always sim yourself. Now let's talk about talents for the Beast Mastery Hunter. At the level 15 talents, we've got Way of the Cobra, Dire Stable, and Big Game Hunter. The only two we're going to focus on today are Way of the Cobra and Dire Stable, since Big Game Hunter actually lags behind significantly. Way of the Cobra is a great single target talent. Uh, if you're not using uh, multi-shot consistently, this is the talent that you want to go with. Dire Stables is a great choice for multi-target fights because it gives more focus. It allows you to cast more multi-shots, more beast cleaves, all that good stuff. At the level 30 talent, we have Stomp, Dire Frenzy, and Chimera Shot. Again, we're only going to be talking about two of these. Chimera Shot lags behind. It's not worth taking in any situation. Stomp causes your Dire Beast to do a high AoE damage when they are summoned. This is a great multi-target talent. I, I use it for 99.9% .9 of the boss encounters in there. Um, dire Frenzy replaces Dire Beasts, which causes your pet to deal significant rapid damage over 5 attacks, and it gives it an increased attack speed bonus of 30%. Now, I will say, and we're going to talk about this when we get to the set bonus section, that Dire Frenzy falls off the map as soon as you get uh, some of your set bonuses. So, Dire Frenzy is really for players that are still working to get their set bonuses. For the most cases, I would recommend taking Stomp. It does give you just as much uh, of a DPS output as you're going to need in that tier. At the 45 talent tier, you can really take any of these, but I would highly recommend post haste mainly because it removes movement impairment effects. And this is huge for anybody that's ever raided and had to deal with um, roots or, or anything like that nature, you know, slows. You really want to make sure you're using post haste to get rid of those movement impairment effects. And this keeps the BM Hunter in that top echelon of mobility. Uh, really, the other two, if you want to take them, you can. My recommendation is going to be post haste. At the level 60 talent tier, we have Bestial, Fury, Blink Strikes, and one with the pack. Now, I take Blink Strikes for 99% of the encounters in the Nighthold. Um, Bestial Fury technically is the top single target performer, but only by a tiny, tiny bit. Blink Strikes definitely helps you out with some of that pet pathing that we talked about before. It allows for easier target switching, which is really the key to the Beast Mastery Hunter. If you do need to switch targets frequently, Blink Strikes is going to be your best friend. Um, one with the pack, it does lag behind unless you're using the legendary Shoulders Mantle of Command, um, in which case it is a single target gain, uh, but you can't be using Dire Frenzy. So there's a little bit of a caveat there with one with the pack. Again, you're going to want to sim yourself to see which talent in this here you're going to want to be taking. In the 75 talent tier, we have Binding Shot, Werve Instinct, and Intimidation. Now, Binding Shot is really the only one we need to talk about because of its raid utility. It synergizes well with some of the fights in the Nighthold, and it actually synergizes really well with the Sefus if you're using that legendary. Werve Instinct is really not applicable anymore since we got Freezing Trap back into the game, and Intimidation could be good in a situation where you need an on-demand stun, but most of the time, Binding Shot will do just fine. In the 90 talent tier, we have a Murder of Crows, Barrage, and Volley. As I mentioned before, Barrage got a significant nerf and a rework. It's really not taking in any situation other than um, heavy spread AoE target situations, which are currently not in the game, so it's really not worth taking. 
Volley is a very powerful AoE cleave type ability. Um, it requires no maintenance since you're just going to toggle Volley on and keep it on for an entire fight. Uh, the more stacked adds are, the more damage you do, but you always want to try and be targeting the middle add in a group, right? So if you're targeting a fight, say, let's score Pyron, right? And you have all of those scorpions that come out. You want to make sure you're aiming towards the center of that group. That's going to give you the best chance at hitting all of those targets or most of those targets with Volley. Now, a Murder of Crows is the go-to for one to three target situations. It's a high damage ability, low focus cost, and the management time is really, really simple. Um, it, you cast it once every minute um, for the most part, and, and it really benefits from the mastery, and that's the key to it. The more mastery you have, the better this talent gets. So a Murder of Crows in most situations, except for some of those AoE fights where you do definitely need that spread DPS. Now in the 100 talent tier, we have Stampede, Killer Cobra, and Aspect of the Beast. Now Aspect of the Beast does lag behind, so it's not really worth taking. It uh, It's interesting, but it, it just doesn't actually perform well in any situation. Stampede did get slightly reworked. It must be aimed now, and it should be used on fights where two or more targets are immobile. Now, the key is immobility here, because you don't want bosses or ads to be running around. It is still on a long three-minute CD, um, and it's difficult to use, to be honest, right now. So, unless you're dealing with a fight like... I guess botanist where your tanks are, are stationary with the target, but even then that fight's not exactly stagnant. So my recommendation would to be take Killer Cobra. Killer Cobra is a great, great talent. It's the best single target talent. It's a great priority target talent. Um, and what that day basically does is allows your Cobra shots to reset the cooldown of your kill command. And this is huge during Bestial Wrath moments. You really, really want to use that at its absolute peak capacity. So pop Bestial Wrath, Make sure you're hitting kill command and then just bring that bad boy right back up with a nice Cobra shot. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about pet talents very quickly. Ferocity is still the highest DPS uh, pet specialization in the game right now, so that is the one you're going to want to take for raids. Moving right along to rotation, the first thing I want to talk about is the cooldowns accessible to the Beast Mastery Hunter. You've got Bestial Wrath and Aspect of the Wild. Bestial Wrath increases all damage you and your pet do by 25% for 10 seconds. Now this cooldown is reduced by 15 seconds each time you cast Dire Beast. Now the key to this one is really simple. You want to start a Bestial Wrath when you have as much focus as possible, and you want to end Bestial Wrath with as little focus as possible. If you are taking Killer Cobras, you're going to want to make sure that you're really on top of hitting your Cobra Shot, resetting your Kill Command, and popping that Kill Command right away. You want to soak as many Kill Commands into the target during a bestial wrath window as possible guys this is the one you need to master next up we have aspect of the wild it gives you 10 focus per one second and 10 percent increased crit on all attacks for 10 seconds now this works really well with bestial wrath you do want to try and line these up as much as possible the key is to use as many bestial wraths within a fight as possible now you don't want to delay bestial wrath too much but if you can get aspect of the wild and bestial wrath to line up that is a hundred percent accepted and really expected for most Beast Mastery Hunters. Now, you have to kind of figure out during a fight when to delay Bestial Wrath. Every fight is going to be a little bit different, and depending on if you're using a Convergence of Fate or not, that changes quite a bit. So my recommendation is this. Don't delay Bestial Wrath too long. If you start to feel in your stomach that you should have popped Bestial Wrath, you probably should have. Aspect of the Wild, it does, it, it's a static CD. It takes time to come off CD. And with the Dire Beast reduction of Bestial Wrath, it does get a little tricky to kind of perfectly time it. Because if you do get a Wild Call proc, you're going to get Bestial Wrath up much quicker than you expect. So really pop that Bestial Wrath that wouldn't wait too long. You'll know when you kind of mess it up. And then you just learn from the situation and move on. Looking at the opener, really simple guys. You're gonna want a potion at two seconds, and you're gonna wanna use a macro on the next three abilities, a Murder of Crows, Bestial Wrath, and Aspect of the Wild. The best thing I ever did on my Beast Mastery Hunter was macro these three abilities together. A Murder of Crows is the only one on the GCD, so you only have to hit one button to get all three abilities up at the exact same time. After that, you're gonna want a kill command or multi-shot if it's a more than one target fight, cast Dire Beasts, and then go into your regular rotation. And the regular rotation is rather simple. You're gonna want a multi-shot to keep Beast Cleave up. You never wanna double cast this to focus starve yourself. There are some situations when you do want a multi-shot multiple times, but that's really only when adds get above four or five targets. After that, you're gonna want a Dire Beast or Dire Frenzy on cooldown, and you will wanna delay Dire Beasts 
if Beast of Wrath is about to come off CD, I would say less than three seconds. Now, the reason for this is because you want to get that full duration uh, reduction off of Bestial Wrath. If you're using it within five seconds, really, or three seconds, as I said, you're really kind of not taking the full value of the Dire Beast proc and the synergy between the abilities. So you do want to delay that, get that Bestial Wrath off, and then cast your Dire Beasts. After that, you do want to kill Command. If it's castable before you refresh, a multi-shot Beast Cleave situation. As a good rule of thumb, you're going to want to make sure you kill command when you have more than 1.3 seconds remaining on Beast Cleave and you're above 55 focus. The key to multi-target fights for a Beast Mastery Hunter is making sure Beast Cleave never falls off the targets. And then finally guys, you're going to want a Cobra Shot to reset your kill command during a Beast Joe Wrath period if you're using Killer Cobras. You do still need to pay attention to Beast Cleave so this can never fall off targets. I cannot stress that enough. Moving to the next section of our guide, let's talk about the tier 19 set bonuses. The two-piece set bonus increases our damage done by Dire Beast during a Bestial Wrath period by 50% for 15 seconds. Now, this does apply to Dire Beast summoned after the Bestial Wrath as well. It does not apply to Dire Frenzy, which makes this talent not worth taking. I did mention during the talent section that Dire Frenzy was good in single target situations, but once you have the two-piece, it actually falls off the radar rather quickly and makes the other talent in that tier much more desirable. The four piece bonus reduces our CD of Bestial Wrath by an additional eight seconds. This means you get more of those saucy Bestial Wraths and it's absolutely crucial to the synergy of the Beast Mastery Hunter. This goes back to what we were just talking about, not delaying Bestial Wrath too much because now with the four piece, each beast, uh, dire beast that you cast gives you that eight additional seconds off your Bestial Wrath. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of those during a fight. The great thing is, guys, that the set bonuses do not change our gameplay at all. Uh, it, it may make one with the pack talent even more ideal if you're using the Mantle of Command, but again, you're going to have to sim yourself and really see how that all plays out. Moving on to gems, enchants, and consumables, I'm going to run down this list relatively quickly. For the neck enchant, you're going to want to be using the Mark of the Trained Soldier, which is your mastery buff. For a back, you're going to want to be using the agility enchant. For your rings, you're going to want to be using the mastery enchant. For your gems, you're going to want to be using one saber eye of agility and fill the rest of your slots with masterful shadow rubies. For your flask, you're going to want to be using the seventh demon. For your potion, you're going to want to be using prolonged power. And for your food, two situations here, guys. You're going to want to be using the Fish Rule Special for one to three target fights and the Nightborn Delicacy Platter for any AoE situations. Let's talk about some legendaries now. Hunter, and specifically BM Hunter, is the most heavily dependent spec on legendaries. Now, I'm going to run down the list here. It is in order. The first one is the Mantle of Command. This gives your Dire Beasts and Dire Frenzy an additional charge. More of those charges means more reduction on Beast Joe Wrath, which means more DPS on your targets. This is an absolutely amazing legendary. If you look at any of the top BM Hunters, they all have the Mantle of Command. This is a completely RNG get. I mean, if you guys have it, you are in great luck. You should be in great shape with the Beast Mastery Hunter. Moving right down the list to the second best legendary, the Roar of the Seven Lions. Now this just causes your Bestial Wrath to reduce the focus cost of all abilities by 15%. Now this synergizes extremely well with Mantle of Command because during those Bestial Wrath periods, all of your abilities are reduced in their focus cost. And this is just absolutely huge, specifically when you're using Killer Cobras because you're getting those Cobra shots off and kill commands all at a reduced focus cost. Now next we have the Kill Jaden's Burning Wish, which is the new trinket in 7.1.5. It is a shared DPS trinket among some of the other classes. It is a ton of passive stats, and if there's anything we know about this expansion is that stat sticks are king. They are great, great tools to have in your toolkit. Uh, the unused proc is also really saucy. It's a 1.15 minute CD. It deals heavy critical AoE damage. You do want to target the center add in a group because it's going to give you a ton of burst AoE damage. Great legendary, great addition to the Hunter Toolkit. Moving down the list, we have the Apex of Predator's Claw. Your pets gain all the passive abilities of all the pet specs and deal 5% increased damage. A really interesting legendary here. It is worth noting that Boar Speed, which is a 30% movement speed to your pet, and Greater Stamina, which increases your pet's health by 60%, do get added to your pet. So you do want to change your pet's spec to Tenacity to also gain the Charge ability. Now this is going to really round out your pet, gives it a little bit more mobility, which helps with the pathing 
issue gives it a little bit more durability, which, you know, sometimes your pet dies specifically on a pole. Um, pet aggro is still a little weird on pole, so this is a good legendary. Um, helps round out your pet quite a bit. Next, we have the Eridun War Order, which causes your Dire Beast to reduce the CD of Kill Command by 3.1 seconds. Now, this is a really powerful single target legendary. 3.1 seconds off Kill Command is really, really strong. You are going to run into some focus issues with this legendary, specifically because the Dire Beast cooldown, although it is relatively long, it's not also relatively short. So you are going to run into some awkwardness with this one, but it is a great and really powerful single target legendary. And finally, guys, we have the Call of the Wild, which reduces the CD CD of all your aspects by 35%. Now this includes Aspect of the Wild, which is your main DPS CD, Aspect of the Cheetah, which is your main mobility CD, and Aspect of the Turtle, which is your main survivability CD. If you are using a Survival Hunter, um, this also reduces the cooldown of Aspect of the Eagle. Um, so if you do want to synergize that, ever switch over to Survival Hunter, you can use this Legendary to some effect. Moving on to Trinkets, guys. Now, Azur Therian is the main theory crafter for the Hunters. He's where I get all of my information from, passing it along to you guys now, but there are some things you do want to notice. He put up a great chart on the Icy Veins website where he posts all of his information. I will put it up on the screen now and provide you with a link in the description below. This chart will give you a really, really great idea of what trinkets you should be aiming for, how item levels impact each of those trinkets, and really where you should be putting your time and effort. Now, some things to aim for, specifically, the BTI, the Unstable Arcano Crystal, and the Entwined Elemental Foci. Now, one of those is from the Nighthold, the Elemental Foci. One of those is from a world boss, the Unstable Arcano Crystal. And one of those, the BTI, which is still the best trinket for the BM Hunter, is from uh, Emerald Nightmare. So you do have to kind of go backwards. You do have to kind of figure out your schedule to get these trinkets. Now, specifically talking about the Nighthold, you have the Entwined Elemental Foci, Convergence of Fate and the Night Blooming Frond. All three are obtainable in the Nighthold. It's where you should spend most of your effort trying to get. Obviously, there are not a ton of groups still running Mythic Emerald Nightmare, but if you can get into a group, try and get the highest possible Warforged BTI because it is, it is still one of the best trinkets in the game for the Hunter across all specs. Now, you also want to be on the lookout for two other things in the world, Haste Stat Sticks and the Six Feather Fan. Now, these have to be above a certain item level. For the Haste Stat Stick, it's really only uh, valuable to you if you look for one over 890, and for the Six Feather Fan, it's really only valuable over 900. Now, these are incredibly rare. Um, the Six Feather Fan is a world drop, so you're going to have to be really lucky or have a lot of gold and hope that somebody has one of those on the auction house. In terms of the Haste Stat Stick, there are some stat sticks in, uh, say, for... TOV, Gorm's got a great stat stick. Um, there are also some out in the world. Those can Titan Forge, but again, we're relying on RNG to hook us up with trinkets that we may or may not ever get. Uh, I would spend most of your time worrying about the trinkets that are directly in your grasp, specifically the Entwined Elemental Foci, the Unstable Arcano Crystal, and the BTI, because those are going to give you the best bang for your buck. And as always, all of these things, want, we want them to be as Warforged as possible. I would highly recommend, once again, simming yourself to make sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck. Now, in the last five minutes here, guys, I wanted to go through some of the basics of each of the bosses in the Nighthold from my perspective as a Beast Mastery Hunter. Starting at the beginning, let's look at Scorpiron. I do take volley during this fight, specifically during progression. You do want to make sure that you are hitting the targets in the middle of an ad pack. Now, mobility is also key with this fight. You always want to put yourself in a position to deal with the Focus Blast and the Shockwave. Now, again, I cannot stress this enough on all of these fights. You are a hunter. You are the most mobile class in the game. Please do not make your healers spend extra time and effort healing you when you have every tool in the toolkit to avoid any damage taken. Moving on to the anomaly, we have uh, the pathing problem. Now, pathing is a complete pain in the ass on this fight, specifically during the slow phase when the boss summons those chromatic adds, right? Your pet needs to move quite a distance to get to that ad. So, really stress the importance of having your tanks move the boss over to the ad to help bridge that gap. Again, guys, mobility is the key here. Always thinking, always be thinking about the next position you should be in. Try and cheat your movements. Obviously, don't go out of range of the healers, but cheat your movements to side to side. If you're about to move left and the whole team's going to move that direction, you should already be there five seconds before the timer goes off. 
Moving on to Triliax, you are most likely going to be on cake duty due to your mobility and survivability. Try not to waste your CDs. You do want to line up your DPS stuff during maybe an annihilation or a period of no mo no motion. Um, the, the annihilation is really my favorite time to do it because I can avoid getting hit by the laser beam and still get a, f a full CD rotation without missing a step. I highly recommend that you guys do this as well. If you can't do it and you're really focused on not getting killed by the beam, just try and find a period where you're not running around the room, specifically when you're sterilizing an ad or going to eat a cake. On the spell blade, the ad damage is the key. If you're progressing on this on normal, all of the ads should be stacked up on the boss as their special abilities are really limited in the normal difficulty. But if you're doing it on heroic or mythic difficulty, uh, the ads may be spread out, specifically the fire and the arcane ads. Now, if you are taking volley on this fight, which I would not recommend, um, you're really going to have to play with it, see what works for your team. You do want to make sure that you are hitting the middle target and that you are always keeping up beast cleave during the ad periods. They should be in range of beast cleave you do want to keep that up try and soak as much damage into those ads as humanly possible if you are using something like a cephas make sure that you're getting your interrupts off specifically on the fire ads because that's going to be a great time to get a little bit of extra haste and really help your team kill those boss uh, boss ads Depending on the situation, you do want to stay away from some of the deadly mechanics, help out your team during the frost phase specifically because you can soak the uh, frost debuff off of players by being close to them. But again, you do want to avoid any deadly mechanics, put yourself in a position away from any of the mechanics that would get you in trouble. Again, mobility is the key here. Moving on to Krosis. I started off the same way I ended the last one. Mobility is the key. During the fire patches, you do want to move your character to the back of the room. With a disengage and perhaps a post-haste talent choice or a aspect of the tiger, you can really get to some of those fire patches in the back of the room with ease. Specifically, um, this helps your range not have to deal with ads, have to turn around 180 style, take care of those, and it really helps your team avoid some of the mechanics, specifically the laser beam. If you don't have to turn away from Krosis as much, your team has a little bit better of a chance of surviving that mechanic. Now you do want to keep your pet on Krosis. Let your dot classes and your range burst classes take care of the fire ads. The pathing is such a problem on this fight, it drives me absolutely insane because your ad, uh, your pet takes about five to six seconds to get to one of the fire ads. It really is a huge DPS loss for you. And specifically when you're on the mythic encounter, this fight has such a high ceiling in terms of DPS. You should be around uh, 600 at a minimum. This is really, really challenging. So you do want to keep your pet on the boss. I know it's not always an option for everybody, uh, but do your best to do, you know, keep your pet on the boss and, and so put as much damage into him as possible. Now you can also help your healers out on this fight by using exhilaration and turtle to avoid raid wide damage. Uh, as a hunter, you do have an immunity with your aspect of the turtle, so you do want to make sure that you're using that to help the tank soak the slam. You can put yourself in the rotation, soak a slam with aspect of the turtle and take that damage off the tank. Moving on to Tychondrius, this one's really straightforward guys, you do want to keep an eye out for the bloods and any ads that may pop up during the fight, multi-shot those, keep beast cleave on the target, and make sure you're targeting the central most ad. As a mobility player, you should be positioning yourself furthest away from the raid team during the carry-in. This just helps your team spread out a little bit more, gives more players more room to stand during that fight. And for the love of god, make sure you get the damn damage buff during the bat phase, there's no reason for a hunter to ever miss out on that because of their mobility. On Star Augur here guys, in phase one, the most simple thing to do when you get the icy debuff is to just disengage away from the group. Rotate your character, disengage out, wait for the debuff to go off, and then rejoin your group. And during phase two, you are also going to want to position yourself away from the team. Now, again, the mobility is king here. You don't have to stop your rotation to deal with the fell pools that spawn under your character. So just move to a nice clear spot, try and overlap the pools the best you can, and just stay towards the edge of the room. There's no reason for you to ever move in unless the fell patches uh, become a problem. You should create those pools right next to each other. It shouldn't impact your rotation or other players at all. And finally, in phase three, you are going to want to make sure you are lining up your CDs during the lust when you kill the ad. That is a crucial part of the fight. A lot of guilds struggle on that. So please, if you have to delay your CDs, do it just to make sure you have that high burst damage. Now, the botanist is a beast cleave fight. You do want to make sure you're maintaining your beast cleave during phase two and phase three when multiple boss ads are out at the same time. 
The parasite mechanic that often causes pathing issues for your pet can be a problem. So throw down a binding shot, a tar trap, a beast cleave if your pet is close enough to it, and really let your DPS handle that one. You're doing enough by binding shot and tar trapping. Now you can concussive shot to slow them down if they are targeting you or somebody else and they're taking a little bit longer to kill. But again, pet pathing can be an issue here, so just play that one by ear. You are going to want to use your mobility to avoid any of the mechanics. Uh, just make sure you're not going out of range of the healers. This can be a big problem, specifically with the Beast Mastery Hunter. A disengage and that extra speed can sometimes push you out of range of healers, and this can be really frustrating for them. At 50%, when all three boss adds are up, you are going to want to have your cooldowns available during that's most likely going to be your lust period. Now, this is only on normal and heroic as the mythic fight is significantly different, um, but you do want to make sure that your CDs are ready to go, pump some serious AoE damage into the bosses with multi-shot, beast cleave, and all of your cooldowns. And then also in phase three, if you do want to help your raid team out, you can use aspect of the turtle to soak the spores on the ground. This reduces a lot of the raid wide damage, avoids players from accidentally running over the spores, and is just a general help to your team. Now, Elisand is probably one of my least favorite fights as a Beast Mastery Hunter. Because we're moving all over the room and ads kind of get spread out sometimes, the pet pathing can be an issue. Most guilds decide to target the blue ad first, then the red ad, then the boss. Now, this is not always ideal for pet pathing, so stress the importance of your tanks keeping those ads close together. Now, Beast Cleave, when it is possible, tanks should be dragging the targets close enough together. If they're not, I would kindly suggest that you would ask your team to do that because there really is no reason for them to be spread apart. Use your mobility in phase two to help with the aphotic orbs. Um, you are one of the most mobile classes, I've said it a million times. If you can get across the room to the uh, orb that may be furthest away from your team, it really helps the rest of the team out. Um, if you want to pop a turtle, you can also do that, but you can also use your Aspect of the Turtle during the Arcanetic Rings ability. Say you're out of position, um, pop Aspect of the Turtle, run through the rings, you never have to worry about them. Finally, guys, the haste buff from the red ad is a DPS catch-up mechanic. But look, you can't DPS if you're dead. The key to this fight is staying alive and trying to time your cooldowns during moments of minimal movement. That haste buff is going to do a lot of extra makeup DPS for you, so really try and line your cooldowns up to get into that haste buff and really lay into the boss. Finally, guys, on Gul'dan, we have a great chance for Beast Cleave and cooldown overlaps in Phase 1 with multiple demon targets out. In Phase 2, mobility is the key. You should always be the first person to help break out the bond targets. You can quickly disengage out, get ready there. If you need to pop a turtle during a solo soak, you can also do that. Uh, you do want to try and save your Bestial Wrath and Aspect for the Eyes in Phase 2 and 3 with the Beast Cleave um, and the Killer Cobras if you're taking that talent. This is going to really, really help with the eye damage, specifically when the eye is empowered and there's only one out. You can really soak some great single target into that eye. Now, you don't want to delay Bestial Wrath too much, and you're going to have to play this one by ear because you don't want to lose too much damage waiting for the optimal time to pop Bestial Wrath. Again, really rely on your gut to tell you if you should be delaying Bestial Wrath, most of the time you're going to be right. Now in phase three, the key to this one is getting out with the fire. You are the most mobile class in the game or one of the most mobile classes in the game. So disengage and leave enough room for the rest of your team to soak the fire. Remember, you can't run over other people in the raid with the fire or it spawns additional pools. So really leave room for the rest of your team to maneuver. And then finally, guys, in phase three, pre-position yourself during the storm mechanic. You really have a great range as a Beast Mastery Hunter, so try and cheat those first two pulses and still be in engagement range of the boss. Just some basic tips on this fight. It's all about the mobility. Obviously, the DPS is just as important. It is a long fight, one of the marathon fights, as I like to call it. So as long as you keep your head on your shoulders, rely on your mobility and your survivability, you will be just fine. Guys, that's all I've got for the 7.1.5 Beast Mastery Hunter Guide. If you do have any questions or concerns about your hunter and your performance in a raid setting, please leave us a comment below. If you want me to look through any of your logs, I'll do my best. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Please like and subscribe. We've got tons of great content on our channel. But for now, my name is Kodiak, Raid Leader for Exile Power, and we'll see you next time.